Hey, I pray that this message greets you well. And today is part two of our conversation around recalling dignity. Now, in our last conversation, I asked you to think about who in your life, whether in your real life or someone that you admired who was famous or a well-known public figure, who in your life comes to mind when you think about dignity? And the other day I shared with you that Nelson and Willie Mandela together, leaving the torture of the prison and the way they walked into Harlem and walked into the Bronx, how 25, 27 years later, I can't shake that image of that dignified couple. And that is all so absolutely true. And there's another person who also comes to mind, who is less well known. And that person was my grandmother. And as many of you know, I'm writing a book about a series of conversations that I've had with her since she passed away. But I want to tell you about her before she passed away. My grandmother, her name was Marion Briscoe, and she lived, she was born and raised in Harlem, and she lived in a home with her parents and her six children and a couple of her siblings. They were all very close in age. To make a long story short, I'll tell you more about it later. Um, she ended up suffering a debilitating stroke when she was in her mid thirties, which left her unable to raise her children. And to the rest of the world, she lived her life, the next 50 years of her life, looking like an old lady in a wheelchair. But to people who really looked in her eyes, and who wanted to sit in her presence, what they witnessed was the embodiment of dignity. My grandmother, Marion Briscoe, never allowed herself to be diminished or demeaned by her stroke, by racism, by the oppression of poverty, by the oppression of women. This woman, who I am fortunate enough to have been, well, I mean, I lived inside of her at some point in my life. She's my mother's mother. She lived the rest of her life in a wheelchair and was the most dignified person I knew. Never wore a house coat. Never, you never saw her slumped over unless she was physically ill. She sat upright. She looked like royalty. Oh, and did I mention that she couldn't speak, that she couldn't walk, that she was incontinent, and yet still, still with all of these things that on the outside look like would be stacked up against her, she was proud. She knew her worth. And when you saw her in her wheelchair, being pushed by someone else. She was dressed like royalty every day. She smiled at the world and she had an infectious laugh. She was dignity. And through her, I continue to strive to always maintain mine. So I don't know who the big mama is in your life, Maybe she's your grandmother. Maybe she's your auntie. Maybe she's your mother's best friend. Maybe she's your mother, your father, a teacher. Think about who in your life eluded dignity and what elements of that dignity that you need to now take in for yourself. I don't know what that is for you. I want you to spend a little time thinking about it. And then I want you to leave your computer, step out into this world and embrace your own dignity. I wish you peace. I wish you a glorious afternoon. I can't wait for you to tell me about it. Peace and blessings. Bye.